Victor's Assembly Church is located along River Road at former Casino Cinema near Kenya Uniform Distributors. To give you offering, send through our in-person number 722 918 agenda this morning joined with the people that are watching us on CTN and those that are watching us online and we have dedicated this Sunday to acknowledge you as a God that works with our, in our midst we acknowledge you for every testimony read here and even the testimonies that you're still writing that we will tell of your goodness we know you are intentional about our lives there is nothing that is happening to us by chance. And we know that all things are working together for our good. It is intentional. As we navigate through the season of Jubilee, let there be change of story. Take all the glory as you do it. Above your head and a shout of praise. Celebrate him. Celebrate him in a victor's way. Come on, we are the house of celebration. have your seat in the presence of the Lord. The Bible recommends that when we meet, let one have a thanksgiving. Let another one have a psalm. Let another one have a spiritual song. Because the house of the Lord is a house of testimonies. And we've already said we will tell the story of how we overcame. We will not narrate stories of defeat. We will narrate stories of victory. I want to welcome all those that are watching us online. We appreciate that you took your time to be with us. We know some of us some of you, is because there is no way you can be here. And we acknowledge that. Can we celebrate those that are watching us online? You can do better than that. At least let us export this environment to where they are. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? In the first service, we talked about, uh, about seven levels of intimacy. And the first level of intimacy is followership. Following. To have people that are following us online, Eh? It is a testimony. Uh, you don't get me. People are doing all kinds of dramas online, on social media, on TikTok, even appearing naked to be followed. But there are people that God has woken up this day that they may watch and listen to the word of God. We pray that the God of this house will bless them. Amen and amen. amen. Say the second level of intimacy is a level of what? Of a believer. We also say there is another level of intimacy. It is a level of discipleship. God will call you raw, but he cannot use you when you are raw. He has to process you. That is discipleship. It is called processing and repackaging. Where if you are Matthew, you are tax collector and you are a thief, you are told to return what you stole. It is called processing. After you leave that level, you go to the point where you become a servant, where you become useful as a disciple. Where he can send you two by two as a disciple. Then you go and win the lost. Go and look for the one. Go look for something. Then you get to a level of sonship. After you become a son, you become more trustworthy. You are worthy. You have rights. And sons are never chased away. Sons have space in their father's house. Then you get to the level of friendship. Where you are no longer just a son, you are a friend of God. Then you get to the next level, where you are in the God class. Like God would tell Moses, that I have made you a God to Pharaoh. It is where what you say and what God says is like one thing. Like where you are with Elijah, Elijah say, I say by my word, the heavens will be shut for three years, there will be no rain. But at my word I will release. It is where you get to a place of dominion. You go back to Eden, where Adam was when he named all the animals. Where God entrusted him with the garden before he was chased out. And one of the key components of Jubilee, we said on Wednesday, is jubilation and celebration. But there is another aspect of Jubilee that is called mercy. Mercy. The season of Jubilee is a season of being shown mercy. Give me Leviticus chapter 25. 
and verse 10. Did you come with your Bible? If you came with your Bible, shout yes. If you don't have your Bible, God bless you. You will carry yours next time. But because I don't have much time, I'll read the word of God quickly. Leviticus 25 and verse 10. The Bible says, And you shall hallow uh, the fifth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land and to the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you. And you shall return every man unto his possession. And he shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. For us, every day represents a year. That's why there are 50 days. I can't hear your amen. You shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself, nor gather the grapes in it, and thy vine undressed. For it is a jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. You shall eat the increase thereof out in the field. In the year of this jubilee, you shall return every man unto his possession. Can we read verse 14 together? Verse 15. According to the number of years, can we make it louder a bit? We are in church, hallelujah. According to the number of years, after the jubilee, thou shalt buy of thy neighbor, and according unto the number of years of the fruits, he shall sell unto thee. Verse 16. Amen. I want to jump to where if a slave uh, wants, is, there is a slave, they shall be set free uh, because I want us to save time uh, so that God may be glorified. Give me that scripture where if I'm, uh, somebody is a slave, you shall return them. Uh, let me get it rightly. Um, verse 40. But as a hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee until unto the year of Jubilee. Verse 41. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and to the possession of his fathers shall he return. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bonds men. In the season of Jubilee, every servant that was bought, every bond slave, every laborer that was working in the farm, they had an option in the season of Jubilee to be shown mercy. And the mercy was you will send them back to return to their family or to their land. And whatever you had bought, the price you had bought them for will be exhausted. And that shows that in the time of Jubilee was the time not only of mercy, but is what is the time of returning. There is something that belongs to you that you lost. In the time of Jubilee, God will allow you to return to that thing that you lost. Can I get a better amen? Even the slave is given permission to return to his family. It means that everybody's right will be given back to them. When God sent Moses to, to, to Pharaoh, this is a statement that God told Moses personally to say. He told him in Exodus 9.1, which is echoed in, in Exodus that you shall say that let my people go, that they may go and serve me. Other versions say that they may go and worship me. Others say that they go and sacrifice. But what the, was the message that God gave to Moses is let my people go, that they may go and worship me. In short, God ushered Israel into 40 years of rest, doing nothing in the wilderness. He provided for them. Their clothes were never worn out. He was speaking to them day and night. There is no enemy that devoured them. They never needed to cook. God was cooking and delivering food in the morning on time. That is the season of Jubilee. When God begins to show you mercy, it is not by your hard work. It is just being aligned with him and you shall enjoy benefits. Tell your neighbor, it is a season to align yourself. Every time, probably when you remove the wheels of your car, they always advise us. Mr. Gitao has always told me that. Thank you. He's one of our best sellers here of Mercedes-Benz cars, if you want. Hallelujah. We are blessed. He sells the top notch. He has aligned with the luxury. Hey, and therefore God must bless him. I am marketing for him. 
You can go and buy for him. Because when you buy for him, that car will carry divine presence. But what am I saying? I have learned something from him. Every time I've taken my car to the garage and they touch the wheel, he has always told me that there is somewhere there, I don't know, they call out to express or whatever. He tells me, that vehicle cannot move the way it is. It needs to be aligned. What does that mean? That every wheel needs to be aligned to the other one so that the motion will be smooth. When the vehicle is not in alignment, what happens? It moves, but the move is not very stable. So what God does in the season of Jubilee, it is to align us into his divine presence. And for the children of Israel, he told them that the earth may go back to the reset mode. You are not going to plant anything on that season of Jubilee. You are not going to harvest. I am going to be responsible to take care of you like I took care of Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden. And they were given a time frame. Every 50 years you will do the same. Because God is so merciful. He has not called the sons of Jacob to seek him in vain. All we need to do is to realign ourselves. Can you celebrate the God of Jubilee? Can you return our Shada Baganda? I want you to shout it's my season of Jubilee. Turn around and say it's my season of Jubilee. Tell your neighbor my Jubilee is here. If they are not active, give them a high five. Tell them receive your Jubilee now. It means that God is ushering you to a season of celebration. He's ushering you to a season of smiling forever and ever. Oh, he's fertilizing the ground that you're standing on. By the time you're coming to plant cassava, it will be fatter, it will be bigger. The next phase of the year, you are going to enjoy the fatness and the drippings from his presence that you have ever experienced before. If I were you, I'll lift up my voice and shout the Lord as hallelujah. have your seat in his presence. The goodness about the New Testament believer. Isaiah said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And it's actually Jesus he was writing about. He has anointed me. To declare the acceptable ear of the Lord. Isaiah 1.1 that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Let's read the word of God. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach Good tidings are coming to you. And to the meek, he has sent me to bind up the broken heart and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. That looks like mercy. Hey, give me verse 2. To proclaim and the day to comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn inside. To give them beauty, the oil of joy for the garment of praise for the spirit of that they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the law that he may be glorified. What Jesus did, he ushered us into a permanent jubilee. Hey, 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 hey. You didn't hear me. We do not need to wait like Israel, his son by covenant or by through Abraham. When Jesus came, he made sure that every ear is an acceptable ear. That's why he said today when you hear his voice, obey. They accused him, why are you healing on Sabbath? He said the son of man is here, so Sabbath is every day. It means that you can de God can declare jubilee anytime. And the time of jubilee is the time of divine acceptability. So I have told you one thing that you need to do is to align yourself. So how do you do your spiritual realignment? By returning to the Lord. By returning to the Lord. We have found that the scandals, even when you go on social media, that are coming from church folk, they are more even filthy than what we are finding in the world. Because to whom much is given, much is required. In the house of God, we have backsliders. They are still with us. They are still worshiping. They are still glorifying God. But they are backslidden. In the house of God, we have people that are lost. They have lost their focus. They can no longer pray. They no longer hunger for the word. They no longer are zealous of the things of God. 
God is announcing a jubilee to you. It is time to return to the Lord. It is time to spiritually align ourselves. We still have people in the house of God. They are still living in defeat. The defeat of sin. The defeat of the carnal nature. Because they, they, they have lost their alignment. There is a time they were walking with God and they were on fire. But they have lost their alignment. It is time to return. It is time to return. It's time to find that pivotal point where you're going, the pendulum is going to swing towards the side of God. Not towards the side of the enemy. Not towards the sides of, of worldliness. I pray that God will help us to return. Can I get a better amen? And in Joel chapter 2 verse 12 to 13, he says, Turn you to me with all your heart in fasting, in mourning, and in weeping. And rend your hearts and not your garments. That's Joel chapter 2 verse 12 to 13. Rend your hearts and not your garments. There are many people in the house of God. I have said they are lost. Others are backslidden. Others are lukewarm. They are not hot. They are not cold. They are not praying. They are not sinning. They are not thankful. They are not begrudging God. The Bible is recommending you either be hot or cold. Tell your neighbor, you either be hot or cold. There is no in between. I came to declare to you, fire is lighting in this house. You are receiving a baptism of fire. You cannot remain the same way again. The Lord has declared that you believe we are going to rend our hearts and not our garments. We are going to weep and we are going to fast. And we are going to tell the Lord, return to us. Where is the Lord God that given a song in the morning? Where is the God that Apostle Paul preached? Where is the God that was preached? And the whole of Samaria came to Jesus. Where is the God of Philip? That even at the, at the threat of the enemy, he was still say, I see Jesus. It is time to return to the Lord. The flesh has stood in the way. We are so sensitive to how we feel until we have lost our spiritual alignment. We are pursuing our personal comfort. It's about the car I drive. It's about the dress I wear. It's about how I look. But God is saying, I'm tired of your designers. I'm tired of the cars you bring to me. I'm tired of the English you bring. I want a hard connection. I don't want to relate with you with your charisma. I know you are charismatic. I know you're gifted. Oh, I know you can sing. I know you can talk. I know you have a look like so. You are handsome to behold. But I want to go beyond the looks. I want to go beyond your bribes. I want to go beyond what you say. I want the rendering of the heart. I am looking inside. Is your heart beating out of my love? Is your heart beating in the Holy Ghost? That is a conversation we need to have. And I pray in the name of Jesus that in this season of mercy, we will return to him with weeping and with fasting, with repentance and humility and tell him, Lord, I don't know where I lost you, but I don't pray like I used to. I don't preach like I used to. I don't follow you like I used to. I don't hunger for you like I used to. I don't even worship you like I used to. I struggle to give. I struggle with your word. I am not the way I used to be, but I'm coming back. It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. Jesus came and told the disciples that you, the heart shall I compare this generation. It shall be like children in the marketplace. They said we sang and you never listened. We sang and you were not happy. Oh, Rabbi Gasha. And he said, remove the noise of your songs because I'm not looking for a sound. I'm looking for the spirit. For the spirit of man is a candlelight of God. God is looking at the candle of your heart. How connected are you? How connected are you? Is it about you or about him? Is it about your image or his image? Is it about his kingdom or is it about your enterprise? Is it about your property or is it about him? You can only return to your property when you give him back his property.
For out of his house there are many things. If they are not there, he will tell us. We do not have because we have no access. Thank you, Jesus. Take your seat in his presence. We are not receiving new things. We are not receiving miracles. Though we are in church, we have no testimony. It is not because God has changed, but because God is spirit. And those who relate with him must relate with him in spirit and in truth. So when you lose your spiritual connection with him, you have no access to the wealth and the treasures in his house. But when we return, when we return, Isaiah 6, 1, come, let us return to the Lord. Even though he has wounded us, he will restore us. Uragabahanda. Even though he has forsaken us, he will heal us. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn, he will heal us. He has smitten but he will bind us up. We have people in the church. You no longer hear the voice of God. It is not God who left. It is us who lost our alignment. Because the enemy wants you to lose your focus. He wants you to seek after things. And lose the giver of things. In Isaiah 45, 22, he says, Turn to me and you will be saved. From all the ends of the earth. 22. Look unto me and be saved. All the ends of the earth. For I am God. And there is none else. There is a version that says return unto me. Matthew 16, 26. For what shall it profit a man. If he gains the whole world. And loses his soul. The wickedness being done in the name of God has reached a critical level. But it's time to return to the Lord. And it is not a mechanical return. It is a heart return. Maragahanda. Can I get a better amen? Zechariah 1.3, return to me, declares the Lord of hosts. And I will return to you. As you return, he returns. It is not God who left. It is us who left, who leave. Because he has promised he will never leave us. And he will never forsake us. If you can't feel him in prayer, it is not God who left. It is us who lose our alignment with him. So what do we, uh, in Malachi 3.7, they are asking the question that I ask right now. Malachi 3.7, return to me, return to me and I will return to you. It says again. But you say, part B of the same. But you say, wherein shall we return? How shall we return to you? The question is, how do we return? Because he's saying we return. How do we return? There are five ways that we can return to the Lord. Number one, examine ourselves and repent. Examine ourselves and repent. Let us get rid of the secret sins in our lives. What you're doing in secret when nobody is watching. Examine yourself and drop it. Because at the end of it all you may hide it from us. But you cannot hide it from him. Is there unforgiveness in you? Let it go. Is there pride and rebellion and arrogance in you? Let it go. Is there secret sin, worldliness that you have? Sexual sin you have? Let it go and tell God, examine yourself and tell him, Lord I'm guilty as charged. I cannot on my own help myself, but I ask for your help. Number two, we also need to seek a reconnection with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus left, he said, I leave unto you the Holy Spirit. He will keep you company. He will teach you all things. He will guide you. It is impossible to please God and enter our jubilee without the help of the Holy Spirit. Because the secret things that are hidden in God are only revealed by the Holy Spirit. He's a custodian of the mysteries of God. So as you walk and fellowship with him, he will show you his mysteries. Number three, begin to believe in his word again. We have many people in the house of God, but they no longer believe the word of God is credible. 
They no longer believe in the credibility of the word of God. Even when the word of God is preached, they do not embrace it with their heart like it is God who spoke it. But I pray that we'll come to the place of believing again. Tell your neighbor, may you believe again. That all things are possible to them that believe. Because you need to come out of the believer's level and get to the next level of discipleship. Where what you have had begins to become useful. Because the word of God you hear, if you do not apply it, it means you never believed it. But as many as believed him, he gave them the right to become the sons of God. There is no inheritance without believing. It is time to believe in the word of God again. When you hear the word of God declared, say it is my word, I believe it and I will run with it. Because you are not a man, no. You are not a man, no. You are the God who opens doors, no man can shut. Ah. You are not You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything. No one like you. Somebody say you're not a man. You're not a man, no. You're not a man. Do you believe it? You're the God who opens doors. No man can shut. He's not a man. You're not a man. You're not a man. You're not a man. You're the God who opens the door. Forever your word is settled in heaven, oh God. Yeah, you're not a man. You're not a man, oh God. You're the God of everything. He is not making suggestions. When he's saying Malachi 3, 7, I said return to me. But you are asking me questions. God, I heard somebody say, God does not want to engage with you intellectually. He is a God of all intelligence. He does not want you to question him because who you are and what you have has come from him. But the fact that you believe in him, you know when he tells you to return, he knows you are out of order. Shadabaga. There is no place for arguing with him. If he tells us go, we will go. We will not ask him why. It is not in our jurisdiction to ask him such questions. Who is man that you are mindful of him? Actually, it doesn't say who. It says what is man? What is man? What is man? What is man? What? What you are determines where, how God relates with you. If you are a son, he relates with you like a son. If you are a child, he relates with you like a... If you are a servant, he will relate with you like a servant. It is time to change levels and return to God. And tell him, Lord, I'm tired of staying in the periphery. I want to get into the inner court. I want to touch the hem of your garment. I want to be the disciple that lies on your chest. I want deeper levels of intimacy. I am tired of watching others come near you. And for me, I am just staying outside the gate. It takes a conscious decision to believe in the word of God again. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. It can never be changed. Even if you challenge it, it remains authentic. But the problem we have, people that are declaring the word, if all the scriptures you declare were come to pass, you would have been very far. But having the word of God in your mouth is totally different than having the God of the word in your mouth. It is time to have the word and the God of the word. And that requires believing because it's a heart issue. If all of us started saying, I'm not poor, I'm not poor, yet poverty is eating us. Has the word of God failed? No. It is because when you speak the word, you speak the word from the realm. It is what? It is a what? What are you when you say it? Paul will say, walk. Sons of Skeva, because of the what question, they'll say, go. They say, Paul, we know. What are you? Ask your neighbor, what are you? What are you to God? What are you? 
Are you a son? Are you a servant? Are you a disciple? Or are you a God? God wants us to get to a place of dominion. What are you? Every man speaks of his own goodness. But it is only the Lord that gives the answer. Only God can introduce you to us. Everybody can say, I am an apostle. Hmm. Hey, don't you remember? Dathan and Korah and Abiram. They came and they started, they sponsored a coup in the camp. And they started saying, even Miriam was part of the recruit. <laughs> Does God speak on it to Moses only? <laughs> and God had to call them for a meeting and introduce Moses to them. He told them, all of you have no place in my heart. For you, I speak to you in dreams. I speak to you in Proverbs. But for Moses, my servant, he is the most meek in the whole earth. For him, I don't send angels. I speak to him face to face. Because every time I have talked to him, he does not engage me intellectually. When he encountered Moses, when Moses encountered God, when the bush was burning, immediately he saw the, the, the bush burning, he approached the bush. And God told him, remove your sandals for the place you're standing on is holy. We never had any conversation. Moses removed the shoes. It is only when God knew that this is somebody I can trust that Moses sought clarification about the assignment. And this is what he says, what shall I tell them? When I, what shall I tell Pharaoh? He said, go tell him, let Israel my son go. Hasha. Can God trust you with your family? Can God trust you with Kenya? Can God trust you in this church? Can God trust you with the secrets of his kingdom? The question is, what are you? Let us return. He never left. It is us who left. Let's believe in him again. And we believe in him by returning to the first love. The fire you had. When you came here before you became familiar. When you used to come here and tremble and feel the presence of God. Before you made social networks. Before you could know what to post on social media. Before you could speak in tongues. Or you would break down in his presence. You would long to be in this house. But right now you're looking for excuses how not to come. Oh, suddenly now there is, you have more assignment. Ah, at that time you had no job. Oh, but now he came and clothed you. Oh, he gave you hope. You are no longer in pain like you used to be. But now it's an issue of the Bible says in Hebrews that do not forsake the fellowship of brethren like is a habit of some. Right now we have to remind you to come for fellowship because the first love was lost. I look for my lover in the woods and my lover was nowhere. God in this season of Jubilee is looking for his lovers. Will you be one of them? Bwana asifiwe sana. My name is Reverend Ruth Wamoyo on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. All you need to do is just go to my page, like, and follow me. And to my YouTube channel, I'm Ruth Wamoyo. Just go there and hit the red subscribe button. You will receive the latest music, the sermons, the gorgeous woman show, divine encounter, and all the services, even lunch hour services. God bless you as you do that.